the renal cortex can look like a bit of a mess when you look at it down the microscope. There's all of these tubules jumbled together, and at first glance they might all look the same. But we know from our anatomy that there are two different types of tubule within the cortex, the proximal renal tubule that concerns itself mainly with reabsorption of important large molecules from the primary filtrate, and the distal convoluted tubule, which is involved in regulation of water and electrolyte content within the urine. So the question is, how can we tell these two features apart? So my top tip for telling the difference is to look for a structure called the macula densa. This structure is part of the distal convoluted tubule and can be found just adjacent to every glomerulus, although you won't always get it in section. So here's a nice example here. You have a glomerulus and then right next to it, jutting up against it, you've got this tubule and we know that this is a distal tubule. So we can use this to calibrate the appearance of a distal tubule within our minds. They have quite low cuboidal epithelium. The density of cells is quite high and the lumen of the tubule is very clear. If you contrast that to this tubule just next to it, which is a proximal tubule, the cells are much larger. They have quite vacuolated cytoplasm and the lumen is much smaller and less clear. It's kind of occupied partially by this fuzzy pink material, especially in this one just next to it, just at this border here. This is the brush border. Obviously these cells are absorbing lots of molecules from the primary filtrate, so they need to increase their surface area uh, so they have a brush border. This tubule here is a particularly fine example. Let's move somewhere else and see if we can use that to identify distal and proximal convoluted tubules. So here's a nice section. We've got two glomeruli with macula densa just next to them here and then another one here. So these are our distal convoluted tubules. And just looking at this image, we can see there's a couple of tubules with similar features. This one has a nice clear lumen, low cuboidal epithelium, not very vacuolated. So distal tubules, distal tubule. Here's another collection of distal tubules, kind of all running down the center of the image. And everything else looks very much like proximal tubule with lumen that is kind of slightly fuzzy pink, uh, large vacuolated cells. But of course there's variation between slides, so let's switch to another slide and see if we can use the same technique. So in this section it looks a little bit different, but we can tell again there's a glomerulus here, there's another one here, even another one here, and then next to it we've got this tubule. It's especially clear here this is probably the cells of the macula densa in a distal convoluted tubule. They're nice and cuboidal, the lumens unobstructed by fuzziness, in contrast to this tubule right next to it, where the lumen's almost not visible because of how fuzzy and pink it is. And the cells are much larger and not as vacuolated as the other slide, but certainly more vacuolated than these ones. If we go off into the parenchyma, we can see a tubule that looks quite similar to the this one down here. So typically I recorded the rest of the video a few days ago, having spent ages collecting nice slides, and today what should happen across my desk, but a slide of kidney that very nicely demonstrates the difference between distal and proximal renal tubules. On this one, it's super obvious the difference between the two types of tubule, even without having to go and look for a macula densa. You can see these ones here are proximal tubules with lots of eosinophilic excitoplasm and the lumen's not very obvious. And these ones here are distal tubules with a nice clear lumen, a slightly smaller, more cuboidal epithelium. I hope this has been a useful video about the difference between proximal and renal distal tubules. If you want more videos about the histology of the kidney, there should be some more on the channel page, including a review of glomerular histology. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.